In the previous video, we walked down memory lane of the humble beginnings of the great Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima. It was an epic journey as we witnessed how dedicated and passionate he was in playing football at such a young age. He was a brave little boy who took his chance to play the sport, and when he was in, he gave his best. No one could stop him, and slowly but surely, he made a name for himself all because of his hard work and exceptional talent. Those who have seen him play all agreed that he was a genius on the field, and that one day he would be named one of the greatest athletes of all time, and they were all right. Now let's continue Ronaldo's story, but before that, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap the bell button so you won't miss any of our videos. When he was just 16, he made a big splash in the league by becoming one of the top goal scorers, impressing everyone who saw him play. Even legendary player Cafu was amazed, saying that Ronaldo finally showed the world that he wasn't only a great player, but a phenomenon. It wasn't just fans who were blown away by his talent. In the same year, PSV scout Ernie Brandt was in Brazil, hoping to find a replacement for Romario, who had left for Barcelona. Romario had set a high bar with his incredible record of 128 goals in 145 matches for PSV. Then along came Ronaldo. After seeing Ronaldo's skills, Brandt couldn't believe what he was witnessing. He once commented that he could not believe that a 16-year-old boy could be that good. Discovering Ronaldo reignited Brandt's passion and purpose. He became a scout with a new dream, the dream of finding someone as extraordinary as the young Ronaldo. But Ronaldo's European journey didn't kick off that year. Before making the move, he had another outstanding season with Cruzeiro. He dominated the Monero Championship, scoring an impressive 22 goals in 19 matches. His exceptional performance not only earned him the top scorer award, but also helped secure the championship title for his team. Along the way, he created many memorable moments, including a fantastic hat-trick against rivals Atletico Mineiro and a goal against Boca Juniors in the Copa Libertadores that filled the entire country with joy. The sheer excitement surrounding his talent convinced the national team coach to call him up for the World Cup at just 17 years old. Even if he had played just one minute, he would have become the third youngest player ever to participate in a World Cup, following only Pelé and Norman Whiteside. However, despite Brazil winning the title, Ronaldo's only time on the pitch was to celebrate with his teammates. While some might find this a bit disappointing, just having the name of a 17-year-old on the team sheet of the most renowned national team in history caught the attention of top European clubs. AC Milan, Juventus and Ajax were among those competing for his signature. His popularity was so intense that big teams were fighting over him. This meant that PSV had some rivals in winning the heart of Ronaldo. During the tournament, Ronaldo formed a close bond with Romario, whom he looked up to as a mentor. When Ronaldo asked Romario for advice on his next move, it's no wonder Romario suggested joining his former team, saying they were the perfect way to kickstart his career in Europe. Looking back, some might argue that joining Ajax could have been a better move, especially considering their Champions League win that year, the one trophy Ronaldo never got to lift. But despite where he could have gone, Ronaldo's choice led to some unforgettable moments, like when Louis van Gaal famously said he didn't need Ronaldo because he had Kluivert, who scored 22 goals that season. Ronaldo, however, confidently stated he'd score 30 goals upon his arrival. Yet, he surpassed everyone's expectations by scoring an incredible 35 goals in his first European season. Interestingly, when Ronaldo arrived, there weren't many fans there to welcome him. Despite his growing popularity, his name was still not on everyone's lips. No one was there to welcome him or to make him feel special. Nowadays, a player like Vinicius Jr. can come from Brazil with just a few goals under his belt and already have 40,000 fans eagerly waiting for him. Back then, things were totally different. This kid, Ronaldo, was pretty much unknown, and even PSV didn't go out of their way to make his move to a new country easy. He landed at the airport almost on his own, with just a piece of paper bearing his name strapped to his chest. Even when his family joined him in Eindhoven, he had to share an apartment with his mom and girlfriend, leading to some understandable tension. But when it came to football, his adaptation was almost flawless. He made a big impact right from the start and took control. 
Despite many experts saying that spending six million on a young and unknown player like him was too risky, Ronaldo proved them all wrong. He scored one goal in his first game, two in his second, and three in his third. Even though they lost to Leverkusen in his third match, his performance amazed everyone in Europe. Many regarded that match as the turning point in Ronaldo's career. After the game, numerous football legends, including Beckenbauer, the esteemed German titan known as Der Kaiser, who was known for being extremely critical, were visibly moved. Beckenbauer even boldly declared that it was the day the world witnessed a new Pele. And considering his close association with Pele, his words carried considerable weight. Similarly, the legendary Rudy Voller couldn't help but express his amazement that a 17-year-old could play that well. As time passed, Ronaldo kept scoring goals relentlessly. By the end of the season, even though PSV didn't win any trophies and only managed to finish third, Ronaldo had fulfilled his promise to Romario. He had broken Romario's record. Despite Romario being considered one of the greatest of all time and almost six years older than Ronaldo when he joined PSV, Ronaldo surpassed Romario's best-ever tally with an impressive 30 league goals. In fact, only one other PSV player had ever reached the 30-goal mark, and the last time any player achieved such numbers in the Eredivisie was a decade earlier. That player was none other than Marco van Basten. After Ronaldo's exceptional season, big clubs, especially Inter, became more determined than ever to sign him. Inter, in particular, made numerous bids, trying to make up for their previous failure to secure his signing three years earlier. However, PSV stood firm and didn't succumb to the pressure. To show to everyone that they weren't entirely reliant on Ronaldo, PSV decided to sign someone they believed could be just as good, Caio Ribeiro the Golden Ball winner of that year's Under-20 World Cup. If you don't recall him, well, that's probably because, by the time he left Italy two years later, all he had managed to do was score a single goal. After a summer, Ronaldo started his second season with a bang. He scored four goals in a single UEFA Cup match and had 11 goals in eight matches by October. But then, the first signs of trouble appeared. Ronaldo had a growth spurt, gaining height and weight, and started feeling off especially in his knees. The pain became unbearable, and he had to take a break for 24 days. Despite the setback, Ronaldo came back strong, scoring eight goals in five matches. But the roller coaster continued. In December, he was sidelined again, and after an MRI, it was clear he needed surgery on his knee due to inflammation and calcification. The surgery happened in February, but Ronaldo was eager to return quickly. He clashed with the manager over his recovery, insisting on getting back on the field. He returned about five weeks later, but his team lost the league title to Ajax. Ronaldo was frustrated and looked for a way out of PSV. His performances in the Olympic Games caught the attention of top clubs worldwide. Inter and Barcelona entered a bidding war, with Barcelona eventually winning. They paid a record-breaking 15 million euros for the 19-year-old. Ironically, just two weeks later, Alan Shearer's transfer to Newcastle broke the record again. Ronaldo was named FIFA World Player of the Year, missing out on the Ballon d'Or by one vote. Inter finally got Ronaldo a year later after some contract issues at Barcelona. But because of his injuries, Ronaldo played only one full season out of five at Inter, spending a total of 773 days sidelined. It's incredibly sad to think that just a year before joining Inter, in an interview, Ronaldo was asked about his biggest fear, and his answer was injury. He said that an injured player is the saddest thing there is. And that's the story of Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima. And to this day, he remains to be one of the greatest athletes in the world. Kids and adults love to watch him play, and he's not just the best, but he's one of the wealthiest athletes of all time. What do you think of Ronaldo Luis Nazario de Lima? Share your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and tap the notification button to stay updated on new videos.